is up everyone welcome back to the crypto blitz your home for your crypto fix i'm your host triple van winkle hopefully everyone had an amazing week it's friday folks it's friday the 13th this is a late night video i just woke up from a nap it is glorious but i am wired i am ready to go on this friday night it's about 8 40 over here on the east coast it's not so beautiful outside it's nice and dark on a friday the 13th we got a lot to go over though in this video we're going to talk about ftx the evil child, Caroline, BNY Mellon, David's response to Charles Hoskins. You're going to want to hear this one. It's a good one. We're going to talk about the deleted post, the post that tried to get away. I got you covered. We're going to talk about automated market makers because we see two, two votes now looking to pass through the AMM amendment, which is going to be massive towards the xrp ledger and the price of xrp and then we're going to talk about the g20 and the latest news article when i'm telling you it's hot off the press it's hot off the press because the g20 is adopting crypto so without further ado let's jump into this total cryptocurrency market cap 1 trillion and 55 billion it's in the red bitcoin twenty six thousand nine hundred and fifty one dollars it's currently up 0.02 percent in the past 24 hours ethereum Coming in at 1,557. It's up about a half a percent. USDT and USDC have both dropped from a dollar one back to their dollar pegs as XRP is cruising at a mean lean 48 cents. It's currently up 0.02%. And I think I seen when I woke up from my nap, someone said XRP was pumping. <coughs> I don't know where, but folks, it's not pumping. We're in that range. I told you 41 to 48 cents. That's the current range we're playing with. The markets are not ready to go just yet. History tells us, and I keep stressing this point, over the past decade, when we look at the Bitcoin halvings and the Bitcoin bull runs, November is the time frame when we see Bitcoin start trending in the right direction. We are getting close, but we are not there just yet. Told you about this this morning. I'll tell you about it again because free potions have already gone out. All you got to do is buy a Lux Lion Superhero, links below, you're getting a free potion. That potion's valued at $165 alone. That potion is going to be used in the Lux Lion's Breeding Lab 2.0. The, the gates open on Monday. You heard that correctly. Monday, October 16th, you'll be able to go into the Breeding Lab. You'll be able to pick from all the different traits. Your eyewear, your headgear, your hat, your mane, your skin color, your background. You create the NFT right in front of your very eyes. You don't like something, you pick a different trait, it remakes that NFT for you. How cool is that? This is the first ever breeding program on the XRP ledger. What Ethereum can do, the XRP can do that much better, and we have proven it over at Lux Lions. Folks, check this out. This is kind of messed up. Well, now it's really messed up, but it's kind of funny at the same time. Look how someone's Amazon package got stolen. Look at this. Hiding in a security cone. Swoops the package. All because everyone has ring doorbells now in these video doorbells. And then they take off. Messed up. That's the freaking world we live in. And that brings me to this. FTX Evil Child. Let me just pause that. We don't need to hear it. We can get rid of that sound. John Deaton says, I'm going to describe for you. I'm not going to play this. If you want to listen to it, go give it. The Wolf of Streets got it on that page. She's nuts. Carolyn Elson, she's freaking nuts, folks. Absolutely. I don't know if it's all an act, if she's trying to play like the insanity card, acting like she doesn't know what was really going on. But John Deaton said, let me sum it up. Yeah, like, whatever. Like, you know, yeah, totally, yeah. This sucks. <laughs> like, no pressure to, like, stick around, you know? Like, yeah. She's nuts. Folks, this could be... Listen, either she really is something's wrong with her or they're trying to play the, the Looney Tune card here. I would not be surprised if herself and Sam Baker Fry tried to play the Looney Tune card to get out of all this. BNY Mellon, Director of Product Management, Stephen Walsh, UX, he explains BNY's Mellon on demand liquidity management. Listen to this. For wire transfer alone, we have 36 software applications that are vital to processing the payments. So when we look at uh, liquidity, we have all these core software applications that are moving money back and forth. We had to get our arms around all this money moving, moving. How do we know who's moving, what money, and when? So we created this, this big data repository, and we use that 
to track the liquidity of a client across lines of business. It gets every debit, every credit. It's a giant database. Has the time that the uh, that the creditor or debit posted, what the what the amount of the transaction was, who the client was, and we use that at an aggregate level to have insight into when a client is using liquidity and when a client needs liquidity. Now, throughout the bank, we also have tools that we can offer to client to help them rationalize their use of liquidity. Does it make sense to be making these payments when you're making them? If you need to make these payments when you're making them, do we need to lend you money to get the payments out? That is part of our core liquidity services. And that is done at a cross line of business level where there is a there's quarterback for the whole bank that says, hey, I, I'm gonna look at liquidity at across different lines of business to be able to rationalize where can we maximize the best value for the client? So that's the, the one of the key things I want to say about this big data. And then the, the second thing, organizationally, we have the quarterback and then within each line of business, there is a liquidity team that makes sure that they are in line with how the, the uh, organization strategically is viewing that client from a liquidity standpoint. Well, interesting, right? Just for... BNY Mellon talking about how liquidity works. Who remembers the uh, Ripple Insights article that was put out in 2016, how BNY Mellon was reinventing payments. Now, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below, but Brad Gollinghouse, I believe his ex-wife's, like, his, what was it, a father? Worked for BNY Mellon? And Ripple talked about them back in 2017, how they were reinventing payments, and now we're hearing from him, from uh, the, dire the director of product management talking about on-demand liquidity and liquidity management? Interesting, right? David Schwartz, what do we got here? Well, he responded to Charles Hoskins. This is all in regards. If you missed the conversation, John Link put it out. Charles Hoskins says ETHgate was simply unequal application, which he doesn't see anything wrong with. He believes that none of the commissioner's actions, well, that they were favored in forms of Ethereum, that corruption was involved. David Schwartz says, I would argue that the government Act and show with favoritism aligned with the personal interests of themselves and their friends is corruption. I, I'm pretty sure that's the definition of corruption. Charles Hoskin, he's playing both sides. If anyone hasn't noticed here, he went from calling all of the Ripple and XRP people and not even just us, just anyone who actually looked at the lawsuit that was going on and all the evidence that was put out there. He called us all crazy, saying that nothing shady has happened. Then the Ripple vs. SEC lawsuit comes out, and all of this was put out in black and white, and it was exposed to corruption. It was exposed that Bill Hinman was told by the SEC not to talk about Ethereum. It was then put out that Joe Lib Lubin had that secret note in his back pocket from Stephen Naroff that pretty much gave them the free pass, and they knew the free pass was coming. Why do you think Hinman and Jay Clayton packed the bags and ran out the door. Then Charles Hoskins says, oh, I think everyone's onto something. And now Charles Hoskins was exposed as being one of the disguised whales involved in Ethereum. Now you think he made all of his money. Makes sense now, doesn't it? And now he's saying that nothing, nothing happened. Nothing was wrong. Then Stephen Naroff put this out, deleted post. In response to a Vitalik Buterin post from February 2019, he says, turns out that Vitalik Buterin encrypted Judas secretly wanted or wants to be XRP. But he's so shy he deleted his tweet, which in this article stated that XRP is better sound money than Bitcoin. Here's the tweet from Vitalik. I think you want to use XRP. The chart for XRP slash XRP would look the same, so it's also sound money, but they have institutional adoption and partnerships. Remember, Vitalik worked for Ripple. He slept on Stefan's Thomas couch for a while. I think he knows what's going on behind the scenes. Now at this point, folks, 2023, four years later, we know Ripple has institutional adoption. Think about how far those institutions has come. When you want to talk about institutions, we could talk about BNY Mellon. We could talk about their on-demand liquidity management we just spoke about. We could talk about the Bank of America patents that are out there. You think Bank of America just drew up a patent because they're not going to use on-demand liquidity? People want to know, the biggest question I get day in and day out, and I answer all these questions, my DMs are wide open, listen, I'll get back to you. I'm not one of those people that sit there and act like they're too good for anyone. We all came from ground zero. 
I sit there, I answer. Everyone needs to start somewhere. Everyone needs to learn. Everyone has questions. I use my social media account as a way to help educate people. Everyone wants to know why is an XRP being used. It's very simple. The laws are still very iffy around how crypto can be used. But as the laws are getting clearer, more adoption is being built out. As we see more adoption gets built out, we're going to see more liquidity come. When we start to get more liquidity, we're going to start seeing the payment volume increase. When the payment volume starts to increase, we're going to start to see more money flow through. As more money flows through, as David Schwartz has once stated in the past, the people aren't going to want to send 100 XRP if they can just send 1 XRP. Remember that. That's a very powerful statement. We're going to fast forward to this so I can give you back your Friday nights, folks. G20, put this out. They are adopting a global roadmap to regulate crypto assets. G20 finance ministers and central bank governors unreveal a crypto roadmap for global regulations and cooperations in the Marquise Kamik. Whatever the G20 and the IMF are going to tell the, tell the entire world to do, the entire world is going to do because they won't be cut out. You're going to see central bank digital currencies come to life. You're going to see cryptocurrencies come to life. You're going to see regulations for cryptocurrencies. Brad Golenhouse talked about 99.9% .9 of these cryptos are going to go away. The G20 and the IMF are going to be the ones that kill them. XRP already has clarity and it has a massive foot in the door with the BIS and the IMF. Remember that. I'm going to leave it like that. Wash your damn hands. Be nice and be kind to of each other. Ripple Van Winkle is out.